mercy and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Prepare. Prepare. Well, of course, we're in Advent season. It's a preparation for the celebration of Christ's first coming. Okay. But as you see the text, they also are dealing with the Preparation for Christ's second coming in glory. You know, as Peter talks about that in, in his epistle today, where it talks about it, it it's, uh, it's kind of frightening. Right? Everything will be dissolved. You know, the forest fires in California are working on that now. But at any rate, it's, it, can you imagine? It's not just talking about California, United States. Or it's talking about the whole of the universe will be melted down, and God will make a new heaven and a new earth for his children. Yeah. Well, so that's, yeah, and we prepare for that. We're, but you know, there's other preparations too. See, didn't it fit so nicely on that tree? Yeah. Couldn't get them all on there. But all the uh, illustrations are, are all the uh, chrismons and so forth, and they've got the the uh, garlands up and and all that you know. And it's just the preparations for our worship place you know, are are completed, as far as I know. <laughs> it's completed. We even got the little tree in the uh, narthex out there. You know, it's kind of as soon as you come in, it's it's different. We prepared for the season. Well, but Advent and today's text are not talking just about preparation for the celebration of his first coming or the preparation of, for uh, anticipation of his second coming, but the preparation of us, not just for Advent, but for as long as we live in time. What about us? How are we prepared? Well, preparations. You, you know what you're doing at home. I don't think our tree is up yet. No, that tells you how involved I am in it. <laughs> but the tree is not up yet. Uh, we've had lots of other things and that have come before that. Maybe this week would be the week. We shall see how much time you have available. <laughs> How's your preparation going? The elders, I think, are about to get their letters out to all of you, their cards, uh, wishing you the season's greetings and a Merry Christmas and so forth. So, you know, look for your elders' notes. Uh, did you, uh, by the way, I'm asking, did you, did you all get your copies of the Lutheran Witness this week, perchance? Has it says the subscription started yet? It starts in January. Okay, well, we got a separate one at church, and I got a separate one at home, and I got a, so I thought maybe it started yet. But anyway, just in case you don't, there's copies back there because it, the title, it, it deals with uh, Mary, Mary, quite contrary, and uh, because even Mary, in all of her blessedness, uh, needed preparation. Uh, she needed to be warned. <laughs> she needed to be announced to her as to what was going to happen to her. Well, just as Isaiah announced to the people of Isaiah's time you know, as to what was going to happen. What was going to happen? Because he had just gone through a lot of warnings and, and prophecies of the horrendous things that were going to happen to the people of Israel. Just like Peter talked about the end of the universe it was the universe of God's people in Israel that was going to be destroyed. But God, through Isaiah, sends comfort to the people. Comfort, comfort ye, my people, God says. Comfort them. Yeah. And he begins to talk about, and, and of course this is also the text from which the, uh, uh, the gospel lesson draws upon about John the baptizer. Yeah. This is not John the evangelist. This is John the cousin of Jesus. Uh, and the, 
the advanced man, if you will, in his day. Yeah. John. You know. And God in the Old Testament said that, you know, prepare the way, you know, voice in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. God is coming. God is coming. Prepare his way. And he says, the mountains, bring them low. The valleys, fill them up. The road, crooked road, straighten it out. The roughness, smooth it out. Do it. Prepare. Get ready. Preparations. Well, God said, if you read it, he's going to be doing that. He tells us to do it because we're before a righteous God, and God is coming. And he says, prepare that way for me to come. Prepare the way. You've got a very special guest coming. Decorate. I I don't know if they're still doing it in the army or not, but if we had a special guest coming, some commanding four, five, six-star general coming, uh, you know, for a a week or so, everybody was out painting the, the, the curbs and the parking lots and sprucing up and trimming and doing everything. He said, preparation. You know, like you guys preparing for Christmas. It makes a difference how much preparation you're going to do as to whether they're meeting at your house or you're going to somebody else's house for Christmas. I, I remember that, you know. So there's, you know, various levels and involvements in preparation. And God says, you know, there's a lot to, you know, they didn't have the... Bring the mountains down, the valleys up, straighten out the crooked, flank. That's what the Savior came to do when he came. That's a part of God's plan for us because he still says that to us. Jesus is coming. We still have the same thing that John said. John said, prepare. Prepare. Mountains down, valleys up, crooked straight, rough flat. Okay. Same thing. He said to the people of Israel, or Jerusalem and Judea, the surrounding territory. And they came to John. First place, he was weird. He was outside the norm. He was like these guys that take a sign and say, get right with God, the end is near, so forth, so on, and and, and wearing strange clothes. That was John. He was the Billy Graham preacher of his day. Didn't, didn't, didn't last long, but he, he proclaimed it. And he preached. And he preached a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. Because this is how you prepare. The decorations are nice, the lights and all that kind of stuff. All that you have ready to either to go or to receive in visitors and so forth, that's all fine. But the reason for the season is where your heart is. Because what God does in baptism is make the peaks, the mountain peaks of your life, kind of puts them into a proper context of eternity. And the valley, the low points of your life, he raises into the context of eternity. And he has straightened out your crookedness and has made the path smooth for you to live life in time. It's not easy. And sometimes we ask God, oh, Lord, How long do I have to put up with this valley of the shadow of death? We don't ask him when we're on the mountaintops of experience and say, oh, this is great. I could sit here forever. This is marvelous. I could enjoy this. I could live down here for wherever, you know, in the Dominican for the rest of my life and have, I, it's like, come Lord Jesus, when you're ready, I'll wait. It's He lowers the high points, raises the low points, straightens out, and levels. God does it in our life. Wow. Well, we think, oh, look how good and grace. I'm doing a good job. I really, he says, no, you're not. I'm doing that in you. 
and you say, oh, God, I really messed up this week. What is, what is going on? And he says, I forgive you. I've already paid for your sins. Come on up. Get up here. We got some, we got some, most, we got some things to do. We got some places to go. Let's do some stuff. You know, I will help you. I'll be with you. I'll help you out. And we say, how long, oh, Lord? You know, that's what Peter talks about. He says, you know, for the Lord, a thousand years is a day, and a day is a thousand years. We're only a week away from creation, you know, <laughs> from God's perspective. That's only a week ago. I, I, well, we don't know how long it is, but even if you take out genealogies and all that kind of stuff, you know, four or five, six thousand years, something like that. Who knows? But for God, his concept of time is beyond time. So what we have to go through, what we have to put up with, what we have to wait for is but a, a moment. But a moment. We look back at the, all the, you know, we only have a few people. Thank you, because history wasn't my great thing. I, I hated to have to remember all those names and all those dates. I just didn't. But, any, yeah. but the book of the martyrs is growing every year. And somebody is recording what names we can come up with. So somewhere in our place, we have people that we can read about that we can say, this is how they lived out their preparation in their lives, in their time. This is how they met their preparation assignment from God. This is how God made the mountains out of the valleys up, the crooked straight and the flat. This is how God gave them that sense of everything is perfect between me and God. And so with knowing and trusting that God has smoothed out everything between him and me, I can live in the low points of life, the high points, the times that I go crooked and make rough roads not only for me but everybody around me. Yeah. It gives me the strength by the power of the Holy Spirit to live with all of that until Jesus comes because I know how the story ends. See? We know how the story ends. Jesus is coming back. God has accomplished that. It is yours. He gives it to you as a gift. When you're, you know, well, time-wise, you know, and wondering about time, it moves a whole lot slower down the valley of the shadow of death than it does when we're on our mountaintop experiences. I mean, we're ready for it to be over now, or please, let, let's prolong this. You know, like, like Peter said on the Mount of Transfiguration, it's great that they're here. We can build tents for you guys so we can all hang out here on the mountain for who knows however long, and they were gone. God smoothed all that out see, for us. In our sinfulness, in our sinful flesh, we enjoy those mountaintops and we suffer through those places and the crooked and all that. We suffer through that. But you know how much easier it is when, you're, when you realize that God has let those mountaintops, valleys, crookedness, bumpy roads left them for us. One, to remind us who's in charge. Two, to remind us to talk to God about those things, both the low and the highs and the crookeds and the rough. Talk to him about them and saying, what lesson am I supposed to learn? Or, oh Lord, how are you using me to witness to your glory in these things that you are letting me encounter. Yeah. And then re always remember to hunger and thirst for righteousness, looking to do things the way God calls upon us, the way God strengthens us. You know, be in the Word. Be in the sacraments. You know, be here. You know, be in your daily Bible studies. Read, take opportunity, because that's how God 
helps us to live with all the brokenness that we encounter in time. That's how he does it. When you find yourself asking, oh, Lord, what am I going to do? He says, I've been trying to help you and tell you for weeks. Why aren't you listening? <laughs> Let me open your ears so that you listen to me, not to all the other directions. That you get more than happy for people to give it to you. I mean, we've been in this self-help thing for, oh, since Adam and Eve, I guess. But we have just published it more lately, the last decades. We can fix anything. And if you can't read, just watch the videos. They make you fit. They make you fine. They make you happy. They make you, they make you compatible. They make you, you know, they can match you up perfectly. Yeah, just, uh, no, they don't. God wants to be a part of your preparation. You can't do it, but he will. Let him. Let the Spirit. Baptism, he made you his child. That's already been done. He has declared you to be holy. You don't have to strive for holiness. You just have to strive for letting God's will become your will. That's no striving. That's a yielding to God. You can't strive without his help. With his help, you can do miracles. Jesus said, mustard seed of size faith moves mountains. God's moved yours for the valley. God is finished. Everything that needs to be done for your salvation has been completed. He's trying so hard. Everything, and he knows a lot how. So when you think God may be against you because of what you're going through, just think maybe he's knocking on your door and says, Hey, you forgot to let me in on your life. Let me in. I may not fix it because I need you to testify to your faith, your hope, and your trust in me, he says, to other people who have no clue that they need to be prepared as well. May God bless your preparations now until Christ comes the second time and takes us where there is no more preparations. As, as Peter says, it will be made all things new again and where righteousness will rule. Amen.